see when people deal with uh, evolutionary aspects they uh, put forward several evidences with respect to organic evolution they want to explain that uh, the different forms of animals and plants have actually evolved during the long course of time and for that geo geography is one of the evidences uh, which they put forward geo stands for animals and geography stands for the uh, geographical parts of the uh, world so distribution of animals in different geographical areas that refers to geo geography so animals are differentially distributed on different parts of the globe and that also helps us to understand the origin and evolution of uh, animals we know that uh, the entire you know landmass which we observe today had not been exactly in the same form several million years back see continental drift has occurred during the long course of earth history some animal forms which evolved at a place may now be diversified and distinctly located due to continental drift uh, you can see this uh, figure in this figure you know the uh, globe is shown the uh, map of entire you know globe is given and uh, at one point of time see nearly 225 million years ago the entire landmass was actually connected to each other you can see the different areas uh, which we find separated substantially separated from each other were actually making a single landmass and that was referred as pangaea now uh, you can see here this one is north america this is part of europe and asia this one is south america this is africa this one is part of india then antarctica australia so all these were actually connected but then uh, because of uh, a continental shift that these continents moved away from each other because of earthquake and several you know changes which Uh, take place uh, regularly and such events are actually the natural events uh, because of that 150 million years ago these continents they started moving and they moved in such a way that substantial gap could be seen between northern and southern portion uh, the northern portion uh, that uh, is referred as laurasia and the southern one as uh, gondwana now uh, then 100 million years back what happened uh, we could see a differentiation as this portion uh, in the upper you know uh, western part this is north america this one is europe and asia this is south america africa and then india you know it got totally separated and it moved to such a distance that it got connected with the uh, with the asia and then this is antarctica which moved to the southern portion australia is still connected with it then presently we have this you know map of the world now uh, today we have divided this entire globe into six geo geographical areas these areas are periarctic region then uh, you know oriental portion this portion becomes oriental then this the lower one uh, that is australian uh, you know region this is australian region then uh, ethiopian region then neartic region and neotropical uh, region so these are six geo geographical areas and we actually uh, want to uh, explain that in these uh, different geographical areas different kinds of animals or uh, native animals are found because we find prototherian mammals only confined in the australian regions we find uh, uh, certain kinds of animals like flightless birds confined in uh, certain continents of the world so uh, so these are the uh, geo geographical regions and this was proposed by valles in 1876 Uh, what i wish to explain that is since we talk about uh, evolutionary aspect 
uh, we can take up the example of lung fishes. We find the lung fishes, they are uh, like Lepidosiren. Presently, surviving lung fishes are represented in the form of three genera. They are Lepidosiren found in uh, South America, then uh, Protopterus, these are found in the freshwater rivers of um, Africa, and then Neoceratodus, this is also a freshwater fish of uh, Australia. So, um, see, these are the continents which are distantly located but they have a single kind of fish that is lungfish since these lungfishes they still have several you know common features means they have a, um, air sacs present in their body that becomes internally vascular and helps in aerial mode of respiration they can uh, spend substantial time period outside the water also so they actually share several common features if you see the structure of their limbs and the internal anatomy you find that uh, they might have originated from a single common ancestor but this will be possible only uh, when uh, they were actually present at one point of time is their uh, common ancestor was present at one place and then they were able to move through freshwater river connections to different uh, portions of the of the uh, you know continents particularly the three separate continents and then uh, presently they are now uh, represented in three separate continents which are distantly located which are distantly located so this help us to understand that uh, the um, lung fishes they are actually the result of uh, the long uh, long evolutionary you know uh, changes and we can also take up the example of uh, flightless birds see the flightless birds they are found in uh, areas like in africa uh, that is ostrich that one which is present in uh, south america is uh, rhea uh, the flightless birds present in Australia is emu and uh, kiwi is found in New Zealand, cassowary is found in uh, Papua, New Guinea. So <clears throat> these are flightless birds. They also share several common features and uh, they had a single you know, common ancestor from which all these uh, originated and they evolved in this long course of time and presently they are distributed in different continents of the world uh, particularly those continents which are uh, distantly located from each other so this will be possible only when uh, there will be a continental shift and they uh, will be uh, originating at one uh, particular place and then they will be uh, diversifying to different areas different places of the world.